H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So first example will be an example of Java runtime polymorphism. So I will have my Eclipse opened. Okay, I have created this session six project. Okay, and inside session twenty sorry session twenty six project, and inside this session twenty six project there is a package called polymorphism. So this package gives you the example one which is nothing but an example of polymorphism now if you see out here this polymorphism package has two classes the bikes class and the splendor class splendor is one of the models of the hero honda bike okay so let us understand what i have written in the bikes class there is nothing but a class called bike and it has a particular non static default method called as run okay and the method body has this println command called running that's all and if you see the splendor class the splendor class has extended or inherited the bike class okay and this splendor class also has its own property called run and it has a println command that run running safely with 60 km that is the println command inside the body of run so if you look out at the bike class also has a run method which is default non static and splendor class which is extending the bike class out here is having the same method name called run but the body part is different now we've seen that a concept in which the over the upcasting technique is used upcasting is the technique in which the you make an object of the child class so splendor is a child class you make the object of the child class and the reference variable b is the reference variable of the parent class so this is nothing but upcasting so after creating the object i have called the run method b dot run so will it actually show me the result which is present in the body of this run inside the bike class or this run inside the splendor class now this is where polymorphism will come into effect so the object takes different forms or many forms in this particular the object is the object of the child class referenced by the reference variable of the bike class so if i run this particular b dot run instead of running the body part of this run present in bike it will actually run the body part of run present in splendor class which is extending the bike class so we'll see that when we run this particular class file called splendor we'll see that it is showing you the result called running safely with 60 kilometers that is nothing but polymorphism it's a runtime polymorphism after running it i am able to check what result it is showing and it is showing you the result which is nothing but the body part of the run method present in the splendor class which extends the bike class it is not showing you the body part called run running which is part of the body present in the run method of the bikes class now since the splendor is extending the bike class and i am creating a upcasting out here where you create an object of the you know the child class referenced by the reference variable of the parent class and when you call the run method i am calling the run method with b reference variable because run method is a non static method so it is not showing you the result or the body of the run method present in bike it is showing you the run method body present in the splendor class so this is a typical example of polymorphism or runtime polymorphism so the body changes so you think that will show you running but it is saying showing you this one and this happens because you are pinpointing the reference variable to the object so this run will actually be being this run method being called inside the splendor class and if you see the result it is showing you the body part of the run method inside the splendor class 
This is an absolute example, a first example of polymorphism. Let's go back to the slide. Now we will see another example of polymorphism out here. In this second example of polymorphism, now I have basically created one particular package called polymorphism 1. And there are four classes inside the package called polymorphism 1. Now it is something like that. This. Now the central bank of India is RBI. So I will call that as a bank class. Now the interest, uh, typical common interest for any, for example, for home loan or for auto loan is, sent by the, is set by this central bank. Okay, so this is the in maximum interest that you can charge for a home loan or for your vehicle loan. And that has to be accepted by all the banks. So SBI, State Bank of India is a bank. ANZ is a bank. We have ICICI is a bank. So all these banks called SBI or I ANZ or ICICI will adhere to the rules set by the central bank that is called RBI Bank in India. I am calling that particular RBI Bank as a bank only. Now, the rule can be followed by SBI, ICICI and ANZ, but it can fix its own interest rate, but cannot give an interest rate which is the maximum interest rate, rate set by the central bank. So, for example, SBI sets the interest rate at 8%. ICICI sets at 9% and you know ANZ sets at 10%. So at this particular understanding, I have created the example 2 of Java runtime polymorphism. And you will see this particular example out here in the Eclipse. So I will close these class files. And if you see there is a package called polymorphism 1 and there are couple of you know class files. Now, this class file called bank is nothing but, let's say, it's a RBI, the Central Bank of India, the bank which governs all the other banks in India. Okay, so it has only a simple, you know, method called get interest rate and it is returning zero. Okay, and then there is a bank called SBI, SBI will have to follow the rules set by the bank class. So in SBI, there is the same method called get interest rate, which was present in bank class also. And the return is set to 8. That means the, this 8 is nothing but the 8% is the interest. So this will return 8. If I run this particular class file, the result will be 8 because the return statement will return the final value. This is the final value and this represents nothing but the interest rate in percentage. Now, if you see out here, the SBI class has extended the bank class. Okay. Similarly, there is ICICI bank. This has also extended the bank class and this has also the same method called get interest rate whose percentage that is loan percentage is fixed at 9% per annum. And that way, I can give return 9. That means this, if I run this particular class file with this particular method, obviously I'll get 9 as the result. Similarly, there's ANZ bank, which is also following up the rules set up by the bank class. This also extends the bank class, if you can see that, and it has the same method called get interest rate, and the interest rate is fixed as 10. So if I run this particular class file and call this particular method, I'll get the result as 10%. Now, I have not used the main methods either in bank class or in SBI or in ICICI or in ANZ. I have created a test class if you see out here and I have called the main method out here and what I have done is that I have done upcasting. Object of the child class referenced by the reference variable of the parent class. Okay. Similarly, object of the ICICI class equal to the reference variable of the parent class and similarly it happens for ANZ also because all these three banks are inheriting the bank class. So I am creating the objects like this, this is upcasting nothing else. Okay and then I call the SBI rate of interest. This will be shown as it is and I am calling B1 dot get interest rate. 
Now, if you see out here, test class is not extending any of the classes. Neither it is extending bank, nor SBI, nor ICICI, or ANC. But I am calling the object of SBI and making it make equal to the reference variable of the parent. So obviously, I can use this get interest rate. So this is calling the get interest rate of which particular method because this get interest rate method is present in ANZ, ICICI, SBI and bank. So is it calling the get interest rate present in bank or is it calling the get interest rate in SBI because this is nothing but B1 is a reference variable of the bank class which is a super class which is pinpointing towards the object of the SBI class. So when I get the result of this, will I get the result as this? zero interest rate or will i get the result as eight i will get the result as eight because this b1 is reference you are pinpointing towards the object and what this the object property has the object this class has one of the properties as get interest rate whose return is eight so what will it return when you print out this particular code it will return SBI rate of interest at 8. Similarly, what will this return? This is, I am calling with B2 reference variable because get interest rate is a method which is non-static method. So, I have to call it with the B2 reference variable. But what will it throw out? Will it throw out 0 which is the interest rate of bank or throw out 9 which is the interest rate of ICICI? It is going to throw out the interest rate of 9. For ANZ, it is going to throw a rate interest rate of 10 because that is what I have defined out here. And if I run the class file, SBI interest rate is 8, this is 9, this is 10. This is absolutely a typical example of runtime polymorphism. So you see, if you go back to your slide, go back to this particular concept. of most use of molymorphism in oops occurs when a parent class reference is used to refer to a child class this typically is a runtime polymorphism okay so this gives you actually the concept of when you are creating an upcasting and you are calling up the method from the reference variable of the parent class it is actually calling out the body of the method present in the child class that is what is happening so what's happening is that you are actually creating objects of the child class referencing it with the parent class and now if you see the and when you are creating these kind of objects in the separate test class which is not at all extending any of these classes and you call up the methods out here the methods will throw the body part of the child classes so this is absolutely a concept of runtime polymorphism now we can see that we expect that the body part of bank will come body part of the method called get interest rate present in bank class will come actually it is throwing out the body part of the get interest rate present in the SBI class this is throwing out the body part of the get interest rate method present in the ICI class this is showing out the body part of the get interest rate method present in the ANZ class. This is a typical example of runtime polymorphism. Third aspect of example is the example of Java runtime polymorphism with data members. Now, polymor runtime polymorphism with data members is not possible. That means with global variables are not possible, even if the methods are overridden. So, we'll go through this particular example. We already have this. First, let me close all these class files. Right click, close all. So, I have created a particular package called polymorphism variables out here. You can see that. This is the package name and it has two classes the bike class, it has a 
non static global variable of integer type and the variable name is split limit and i fix the you know the value of it to 90 and this bike class is inherited by honda class and the speed limit that is set for the honda class is 150 it's a non static global variable out here in the bike class i have not called the main method by in the honda cars i have called the main method out here the similarity is that the bike class and the honda class has the same non static global variable split limit but the values of the split limit present in honda class which is extending the bike class is 150 whereas the value of speed limit in bike class is 90 okay this is nothing but a data member or a global variable whatever you can call it as so in this particular class this is the data member so data members does not have the concept of runtime polymorphism even if the methods are overridden okay so out here in honda class if you see the main method is present and i have created a upcasting technique out here where object of the child class is created and it is referenced by the bike class which is the parent class and referenced by the reference variable b1 i am directly calling the split limit out here okay so you will think that i should get the result of 150 that is what you have got when you had called the non-static methods present in the child parent class of the other examples of runtime polymorphism now those were methods this is a data member so if let's say if it is a method then this b1 dot method will throw the body part of the method present in the child class now here it is a data member or a global variable so you will think that you will get 150 result for this no the runtime polymorphism will not work for data members that is for global variables so you will think you will get 150 no you will get still 90 so if i run it i am getting 90 which is nothing but the variable value present in the bikes class that means i am trying to say is that you have created okay a upcasting out here and which is extensively used in your runtime polymorphism and even if you have created upcasting and you've extended the class file still it is the data members are or the global variable value does not change it will show you the value of the bike class it will not show you the value of the speed limit variable which is 150 in the honda class so that is what i have given out here in the slide also that i have shown you example of java runtime polymorphism with data members but actually runtime polymorphism for data members does not happen runtime polymorphism only happens for methods and the second observation that you should have is that the runtime polymorphism has the concept of you know inheritance inside it and has the concept of upcasting so let us go back to the slide the fourth example is the run example of java runtime polymorphism with multi-level inheritance we have already seen what is multi-level inheritance in the earlier session so we will see how do we implement runtime polymorphism with multi-level inheritance so i've gone go back out here i'll close all these class files so i've created a package called polymorphism multi-level inheritance so there's an animal class it has a public non-static method called eat and the body part shows eating this animal class is inherited by the by the dog class let me first show you the dog class so the dog class extends the animal class and it this dog class also has the eat method which is public non-static void return time method and the body part is different eating meat so eat method is present in animal class as well as in dog class and if you see there's a baby dog class which extends the dog class so this is a typical example of multi-level inheritance and in this baby dog class i have called the main method and i have created 
object of the animal class object of the dog class represented by the reference variable a2 of the parent class this is upcasting this is also upcasting okay and now i have called the eat eat method the eat method is also present in the baby dog baby dog eating method is also public non static and this is the method body thinking milk so the eat method is common between this class this class and this class the only difference is that the body part of the eat method the body part of eat method for black baby dog is thinking milk for this particular class eat method has eating meat for animal class the eat method has the body called eating now in the baby dog i have called the main method and i have created a object of the animal class and reference it with the animal class only object of the child class reference with animal class object of the grandchild reference with the reference variable of the uh, of the parent or other the grandparent class and these these two are typical example of upcasting out here so i am calling the eat method with the reference variable a1 a2 and a3 see if i run this what would the result i'll get this is calling the eat method present in animal so this is going to throw me the result as eating where out here a2 is a reference variable of the parent class pinpointing to the object of the dog class so this will call the body part of the eat method present in dog so eating meat will be thrown out this will be throwing out the result of thinking milk if you see this is happening because this is the concept of runtime polymorphism where you are using two upcasting objects out here so if i run this class file after saving i'm getting the console result as eating for a1 dot eat eating milk meat that is a2 dot eat and this is thinking milk a3 dot eat this is another example of runtime polymorphism applied in multi level inheritance multi level inheritance means that a grandparent parent and a grandchild kind of concept so that's about it thanks for watching this video